All right, everybody, welcome back to my TV program. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press, and I got a crazy book review for you today. And I am going to be reviewing The High Couch of Silistra by Janet E. Morris. This is book one in the Silistra series. Now, came out in 1977. We're going to talk a little bit about the history of this book, but first and the author. But then we're but first we're going to talk about the covers because you know I love graphic design and book cover illustration, and my God, it doesn't get better than this. This illustration was done by Lou Feck. He was a great illustrator of a lot of Western novels in the 1970s, a lot of um, other, you know, mystery novels, pulp fiction novels, stuff like that. And he did these magnificent 70s trash fantasy novel covers. And I just love them. I don't know if I can get them in focus, but... You know, I saw these for sale on eBay, the entire set. There's four in the series. I saw them recommended. Okay, the reason they were recommended. Let's, let's start from the beginning. This Crazy Raven series that I've been reading and reviewing, these 70s trash novels were recommended to me on my eBay's recommended list a while back and I got them all and I've been reading them and reviewing them for the channel and they've been delightful and they've got these crazy covers by Louis Royo. Since I purchased those now I am getting hordes and hordes of 70s fantasy trash novels being recommended to me on my eBay things I should buy list it's quite frankly one of the best things that's ever happened to me in my life because I'm being introduced to books that I've never knew existed, that I'm reading and finding out are absolutely fantastic, bizarre, and weird, and the, they're just absolute gems in my collection. So, this was recommended to me, this, this set of pristine, brand new, 1977 was when these were published, the Solistra series, each with a cover better than the next. You no, know I love these covers. So let's get into it. Let's get into this. A deep dive into one of the wackiest books. One of the most WTF books I've ever read. The High Couch of Solistra. Now, I talked about the Raven series being sort of like... Conan the Barbarian-esque, and very, very easy reads, very, very well written. The prose was very good, it very, it really reminded me of Robert E. Howard. This, on the other hand, is almost the opposite direction. I was not expecting the world building in this to be so detailed. This is almost like Dune in world building and prose and just the sharpness and crispness of the Janet E. Morris's writing. It's so great that it reminded me of Dune. The world building is surprisingly and shockingly huge in this and it's as if Dune had been filmed as a late night HBO special in the early 80s where there was a lot of sex. And naked women. I mean, look at the cover that Lou Feck drew. I mean, you thought the covers that Louis Royo did for Raven were racy. Well, we step it up a notch with these covers. I mean, we step it up a notch. I don't even know what to say. Janet E. Morris. Before we get into the book review, let's talk about Janet E. Morris and the, her history. So Janet E. Morris, I loved the, um, I loved uh, what they said about the author in the back of the author thing. If I can find it, we will read it. Yes, about the author. The, uh, the just the about the author is gold. Janet E. Morris lives in Hyannis, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. She is in her 30s. 
and is a professional musician who sings and plays the bass guitar. This is the first book in her Solistra series. I like how simple that is. She's in her 30s. She plays the bass guitar. What else do we need to know about her? Well, actually, there's quite a bit to know about her. She was actually one of the original authors in the classic Thieves World series. And you can look at my reviews of the Thieves World series. Just type in Thieves World, my last name. You can see it You can about these books. She wrote three of the best Thieves World. I can't get that to stand up. Stay. Stay. She wrote three of the best Thieves World spinoff novels that I've got here. So that's who Janet Morris is. If, you've, if you're into Thieves World, you'll recognize her name. And she is a dynamite writer. Now let's get into High Couch of Solistra. Book one in the Solistra series, 1977, trash fantasy novel with a lot of sex. Uh, let's just read the back again where the, there's gold just on the back copy. Her sensuality was the core of her world. Her quest was in galaxies beyond the civilized stars. Somewhere deep in the heavens of a terribly distant tomorrow was the one man who will conquer her own. The high couch of Solistra. There's a, I mean, my God. There's a, um, what does it call it? It's called, oh, oh, here on the front cover, just right on the front cover, it says, the amazing and erotic adventures of the most beautiful courtesan in tomorrow's universe. It's a, yeah, I, so you can't explain, that's the best explanation for what's going on in here. Um, I mean, I picked this up thinking, what the f am I getting into? And then I read the first three, three paragraphs, which I will read for you now. Bear with me, because this is an absolutely dynamite beginning to a story, and it really has got some great world building in it, and you just know exactly what you're getting into here. So here we start. I am Estri Hadrath Diet Estrazi, former well keepress of Astria on the planet Silistra. I have begun three times to tell this story, and three times I have been interrupted. This then, the fourth attempt, will surely prove successful. Perhaps you have heard of Silistra, the planet that was catalyst to the sexual revolution in the year 22,704, bipedal Confederate Standard Time, or of the Silistran serums that lengthen life and restore vitality in virtually any bipedal life form. Or perhaps you have at some time contracted the service of a Silistran telepath, or a precognitive, or a deep reader. It is possible that you have on your own home the scintillating, indestructible web cloth woven by one of our domestic arachnids, or have seen holograms of our Golakites, those intelligent builder beetles who exude from stuff called goal and create from this goal under the guidance of the, I'm not going to say that, guards, the formidable and, res, that would have got me blocked on YouTube, the formidable and resplendent structures in which we live and work. And perhaps you have seen no web cloth, no goal, never been ill or never interested in sex. If so, you may never heard of Solistra at all. Anyway. We get a lot of world building and a setup for what's going to happen in this book. What happens in this book? Estri, our main character, who is depicted here in all her glory, Estri is um, a uh, she's writing her history, much as much as Quoth in the Name of the Wind writes his history, or any of the many fantasy stories where the main character is writing down his history. You know, Robin Hobb books, The Assassin's Apprentice. I could name millions. Well, this girl is writing her history as a courtesan on the planet Celestri. She, um, let's see, she's an orphan, so that's interesting. She's, uh, 
And I have a soft spot. You know me, I love Luke Skywalker, Jon Snow. I love any of those orphan bastard farm boys. Well, she's an orphan bastard uh, courtesan. What can you do? I have a soft spot for any young person that grows up with, because I, I myself was adopted. Never knew my biological heritage anyway. That's enough of that. Anyway, she is given a ring she was gifted this ring, and it's her father's ring. She figured it's, it's her father's ring, and she needs to keep it safe. Because if she keeps the ring safe, the ring will keep her safe if she's around certain people that may or may not wish her ill will. Anyway, it, Estri has a bit of a magical power. She can read minds. Not really read minds, but she can read the deepest emotions inside of a person. She knows exactly what a person is feeling all the time. Now, there's another magical power in this universe, and it is, uh, you can predict the future. Well, she can't predict the future, but she can read minds. And uh, she's a courtesan. I, she services this, she lives on the planet Celestri. There's a galaxy out there. I mean, it is full of, uh, it's kind of like Celestri itself is like a medieval Roman Dungeons and Dragons-esque sort of planet, but starships visit this planet all the time. It's sort of a, is full of, the planet's full of nobility, plus it's full of the courtesans, which of course the starship captains and all of the um, people want, all the dignitaries want to partake of the, I mean, wouldn't you? I mean, if you were a starship captain or a dignitary from another planet, if, you know, this was, yeah, I, I'm just saying, this is what the book is about. It's pretty much all about what this book is about. This is an erotic fantasy. I don't know how to explain it differently. There's not, I mean, there are, the world building is so detailed that you know that you're in a world that is crafted as detailed as something like Dune, like Frank Herbert did. And these courtesans, they, they, they go on little adventures. They um, sleep with different starships, captains. Uh, her adventure is, you know, her. she wants to find her father. Um, uh, it's literally... Um, now, if you go to Goodreads, which I did, because I wanted to see what other people may have thought of this. If you go to Goodreads, you're going to find just a very broad range of very divergent opinions. Some people think this is very 1970s feminism. Some think this is just 1970s rape porn. Um, so if you're not into that type of thing, if you're not into like, I don't know, I just, it, you can just picture it in your head. Picture those old uh, B movies where um, the whole point of the movie was to get girls naked on screen so people would watch late at night. That's what this book is. That's what exactly what this book is. Set on a planet as well written and detailed as Dune, and written by Janet E. Morris, who's a magnificent writer. I was very conflicted myself with this book because I'm like, that's not a whole lot of action and adventure and stuff going on. It's just sort of one very graphically detailed sex scene after the next. Well, it's about a courtesan. I mean, and then, and so I was like, okay, which did I like better? Did I like, um, did I like the 70 trash novels? Raven? The more Conan-esque sex romps? Or do I like the more Dune, the Dune-like? The more Dune-like? I mean, which ones did I enjoy more? Well, I think this one has more, um, the Raven books have more action and adventure, and sword fighting, killing, blood and guts. This has much more detailed world building, very well crafted, the writing is slightly better, and, um, but you're not getting a whole lot of action and adventure, you're getting the, uh, the uh, memoirs of a courtesan. She hasn't turned into an assassin or an outlaw yet, unlike Raven, but there's three more books to go, maybe she will. So whereas I gave this one a really, really dynamite rating, I still loved this one a lot for what it was. But I did find my mind wandering just a little bit. I mean, you've got to pay attention to this. This is easy, fast, popcorn, 
action adventure. This is, you You got to pay attention to this like you paid attention to Dune when you read Dune. It is that the prose is just that well done, and the world building is that complex. I give this a 7 out of 10, hoping that we can even step up the game in the next ones. However, just the fact that I found these on Amazon, all in mint condition for relatively hardly any money at all, is I, I, I win at life once again. I just do.